Hey there guys, I'm Jesse Crow, the Travelling Scientist, and today we're going to be looking at the pill. How does it work and what are the side effects? So, the pill is a pill, obviously, that a lot of ladies take every single day. The reason it's called the pill is because it's a contraceptive, meaning it prevents pregnancy. So if you don't want to have babies, who wants to have babies? You want this pill. The pill works because it's a combination of two hormones, estrogen and progesterone, which work to prevent ovulation. Normally when your estrogen and progesterone levels drop, which happens roughly every four weeks, this promotes the production of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, both of which trigger ovulation which is the release of the egg into the uterus to be fertilized. But when you take the pill every day, your estrogen and progesterone levels remain stable, so ovulation is suppressed. Whew. The pill also changes the mucus in the cervix to hate sperm. It alters the endometrium to be less hospitable to sperm, and it reduces the ability of the fallopian tubes to allow egg and sperm interaction. Poor sperm. Fun fact. The pill was originally developed to treat menstrual disorders such as polycystic ovary syndrome and endometriosis with a side effect that actually prevented pregnancy. When an unusually large number of women started claiming that they had menstrual disorders, it was realized that perhaps a drug that prevented pregnancy was probably a good idea. Now if you're taking the pill and that's your only method of contraception, in one year of regular sex there's a 9% chance that you're going to fall pregnant. But that's going to vary greatly depending on how much action you're actually getting, right? Right? And uh, how good you are at taking the pill every single day. So great, right? Take the pill every day and have all the sex in the world. No problems. That does sound good. But it's wrong. The pill has been shown to increase the risk of blood clots, which can cause things like heart attack and stroke. And that's pretty messed up, right? I mean, that can kill you. But don't freak out. Research has shown that if you take the pill for 10 years, your chance of suffering from a serious blood clot is about 0.5%. Now that's very low, but it's a little bit higher than your risk if you weren't taking the pill. Research has also shown that an increased risk of blood clot from the pill is actually caused by the estrogen in the pill. So if you take away the estrogen, wait, 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 I got this. You take away the estrogen, take away the risk. Presenting the mini pill. The mini pill is confusingly exactly the same size as the regular pill, but it contains the progesterone without the estrogen. And the advantage is that it's less likely to kill you. And it's also good for women that can't really tolerate estrogen. The disadvantage is that if you don't take the mini pill at the exact same time every single day, it's going to be ineffective and you're going to get pregnant. Damn it, not again. Another side effect of the pill is that it slightly increases your risk of getting things like breast and cervical cancers. But then again, it also decreases your risk of getting ovarian, endometrial and colorectal cancers. Wait, what? Apparently these fluctuating levels of hormones in your body are going to have different effects on different types of cancers. I mean, everything causes cancer nowadays. Again, remember that the pill only has a slight effect on your risk of cancer, so don't take it too seriously. Finally, the pill can have a bunch of minor side effects, things like weight gain, acne, hair growth, nausea, all sorts of junk. And the reason for this is that different types of the pill contain different levels of hormones which are going to act differently in different people. So at the end of the day, if the pill is making you feel uncomfortable, see your doctor and try switching to a different type of the pill or a different contraceptive altogether. If you don't want to take the pill, there's plenty of other methods of contraception. There's abstinence, but that's not really very fun. Don't do that. There's condoms, which are always a good idea because they're going to protect you from sexually transmitted infections, which the pill does not do. There's barrier methods like sponges and diaphragms. There's spermicides, things that kill sperm, and there's also intrauterine devices, or IUDs. If you'd like me to do a video on any other methods of contraception, or if you have any questions about the pill at all, let us know in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something, click the like button. 
And next week, we're going to be moving into some more illicit drugs. So make sure you subscribe for more Traveling Science every week. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. And also, how much action you're getting. Am I right? Huh? 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 Maybe, maybe you're not getting any? Huh? I'm not judging. I'm just saying. Huh? I mean, if you're having a lot of sex, you're going to get pregnant. You need the pill. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Poor sperm. Poor sperm. Poor sperm. Poor sperm. Poor sperm.